Hey guys, this is Naveen here. Welcome back to Naveen Automation Labs. So today onwards, we are going to start with our GraphQL series and we will see how to automate GraphQL also. But before that, we need to understand what do you mean by GraphQL, right? There are a lot of uh, questions in your mind. Well, how GraphQL is uh, different from REST APIs and uh, what are the benefits? What are the advantages as compared to a typical REST API? So I would say guys, the GraphQL is a new API standard. Okay, it's actually an API only, but it is a different from a typical REST API. It is more efficient, more powerful and more flexible alternative to REST API, right? It is actually uh, open source and developed by Facebook. Okay, and now it is open source and uh, it is now handled by different communities, different companies now handling it and different really good people are working on uh, GraphQL. Uh, code development in the GraphQL uh, community development. Uh, there are a lot of companies are available. They are doing that. So what do you mean by GraphQL? With the GraphQL itself, with the name itself, you can say it's a graph query language. It means whatever the data that you need, you send in the form of query and then the server will respond to you for that particular query. So let's understand that one problem over here that we were actually facing earlier. So I'll show you one uh, simple diagram over here. If you see that I fetched it from Google. So this is a typical REST API. You are sending a request that, okay, yeah, I want user ID. And then I want uh, for that ID, I want some post. And then I want to check how many followers I have for that particular ID for that particular user. So there are three API endpoints are available, pass the ID, post and the followers. So first you fetch the ID and then this is the user information that you are getting it. Then the second call you are making it to post that for that ID, how many posts are available. So then you can see that, okay, these are the posts are available. Then the third request you are sending, okay, for that uh, user ID, how many followers are there? So this is the followers information that you are getting it. It means you are uh, hitting three APIs back to back. And these uh, three results that you are showing on, on some your blogging information or maybe on some any kind of client, maybe mobile or desktop or any web application that you want to show it over there. But the problem is that just to show some basic information, I want to show that, okay, what is a user ID, how many posts are available and how many followers are available for that user. Only that information, I want to show it on my client, on my mobile phone, on my web application, on my UI. So in that case, you are hitting three services. It means you are making this request to the server three times for three different APIs and then fetching the huge amount of data and then displaying and filtering out that particular data and displaying on the client. This is the problem with the typical REST API. Then how exactly the GraphQL will solve the problem? So let's see, this is the GraphQL server. And then this information is already available at the server side or maybe in your database side. So this is the query that we will send over here that, okay, hey, for this user ID, I want name. I want uh, a post like uh, how many titles are there for that particular post. And I want to check that, okay, tell me or show me the last three latest uh, followers are there and give me their names. That's it. This is what I want. So we will send a post request to the GraphQL server and the server will respond back a typical JSON file over here in this particular format that, okay, yeah, uh, this is the data. This is the user where name equal to Mary post is equal to this. And they are the three followers are available for that. Right. So in the GraphQL, the client, the user can specify exactly the data it needs in a query. I don't need to hit that. Okay. I give me the user ID and then I'm getting hundred attributes of that particular user, but I want only name or let's say I want just only how many posts are available for that particular user or tell me the last three uh, followers of that particular user. Right. So in this case, the GraphQL will say, okay, fine. You send me the query. What exactly you want? It is asking from the client, from the user side, what exactly you want, send me the query. And on the basis of that query, we will uh, give you the response over here like that. So with the graph, graph means number of nodes are available in the graph. So you can see this is a user ID, one node and uh, post is one node and post ID is equal to three is another node over here. So this user is actually connected. You can see there are some connections are available. These are edges. These are connected with these ports. So this is my root. So I'll hit the query at the root side. Okay. Okay. Fine. This user ID equal to one. Tell me how many posts are available. So it's having, let's see two posts, post ID one and post ID number two. Tell me how many followers are there. So I'll, it will automatically go to the, through them resolver functions. It will auto go to that particular post node and then fetch all the information and then respond back to the 
respond back to the server okay respond back to the client so if you see this uh, describe your data over here that what exactly you want so first of all i'll describe my data in my server that okay fine for this particular project i have name tagline and contributions and then what exactly you want from the client side so from the client side i'll send this request that okay yeah the name equal to graphql and i want only tagline do not send me any other thing and then whatever the request response that you are getting for that request query i'll be getting a here like that right so this is what about the graphql now there are a lot of advantages see i'll show you one thing this is without graphql a typical rest api let's see there is a mobile app application i want to display some basic information about that particular user and then uh, i'm sending three endpoint url you can see that uh, purple green and yellow and there are three database are available where three information their respective information are available in this database and let's see these are the microservices or maybe the rest api endpoints are available so let's see so without graphql what exactly we're sending first data fetching this information see this completely first we are getting a lot of information from the server but we need only few information instead of these hundred attributes in the JSON response. We need only few one. So we will filter it out and rest of the things we don't need it. So we, then again, we are calling the second API and then we are sending the request, getting the data from the response, uh, from the database, sending the response to the client and saying, okay, fine. Client says, okay, I need only two information from that particular uh, response. And then we are hitting the third API, let's see, again, getting the data from the database in the form of response, JSON response we are getting. And then we need only few information like that and rest of the information, we don't need that. So this is the only information I want. And then we will display on the UI on the mobile side. And then you can see that, okay, yeah, I want this particular user and some information over here, that's it. So first user, and this is the second user, only four attributes I need out of 100 or 200 attributes which are coming from the a response from the server with graphql see this and then i'll send this request okay the graphql will filter it out and combine the data and give it to the response back to the user only so graphql say okay fine this is what you want i'll give you that exactly same thing only okay i will not uh, proceed or i will not give you unnecessary data in the form of response so that's why the, the response is coming like that so in both the cases the ui will be remains will remain same but if you see the performance with graphql is amazingly good now another problem is that if you have let's see you want to display three information that okay i want to display the user information i want to display that okay how many posts this user has written and how many followers are there so if you have a three endpoint urls you are hitting this request three times right first for the user id you are passing then for this id how many posts are available and then for this id how many followers are available over here and then we are getting the response back to this guy so it means three times one two and three apis you are hitting over here right but with the graphql the same information that you need you send this particular request to the graphql server a query so you are sending one query over here and the query format something like this that i want this this information about this particular user only these attributes i need it and then you will get the response back to the client over here like that and the same information you will display here now what is the advantages there are so many advantages the first advantage is that more and more efficient in terms of performance second advantage is that if any changes are happening at the ui side let's see ui attribute got changed or something i can decide later on okay fine i want to add one more attribute and send the again add this particular attribute to the to this particular query and again again get the response over here another thing is that you don't need to have many requests right you are unnecessarily sending so many requests and then finally you are fetching the data so sending first request then second request and the third request and then you are getting the re response over here so you can get rid of many requests the third advantage is that unnecessary over data that you are getting it so let's see i'm sending the request for this particular post and I'm getting 100 attributes in the JSON that I don't want. Out of 100, I want only five information, right? So over fetching data that you can avoid that in this particular case. Then the fourth advantage is that if any UI changes are available, as I told you, then UI developer can say, okay, fine that, okay, we are not dependent on this particular uh, GraphQL, uh, the response every time that we are getting it. I can make any changes anytime because in the agile world, let's see your product manager say, okay, no, add these two more attributes, add these three attributes or delete these three attributes. So I just prepare the query accordingly at the runtime and send the request to the server and get the response accordingly. So this is where 
I can uh, do a rapid uh, product iterations and the development I can, uh, you know, I can do that. Now, another thing is that you can get some really insightful analytics, crew level analytics, you can do that guys in this case. For example, let's say this user always wants the number of posts and number of followers, right? Number of followers. These attributes requests are the most uh, a common request the client is sending that, okay, I want post and the followers and then uh, what is the price of this particular course? So let's see. So I can put some analytics, okay, fine, at the production side, uh, how many requests a user is sending or client is sending for these number of attributes. So I can do more enhancement, okay, around these attributes over here. I can uh, uh, improve some deadlock conditions or provide some more better data to the management that, okay, yeah, this is the kind of request is coming from the client side, which user in which region, in which geographical region, the people are requesting for that particular attribute. So a very micro level analytics, you can uh, do that in this case. So that is why the GraphQL is very important. It will store the data in the form of uh, internally, the form of uh, a typical graph, graph, how exactly it look like. So let's see, this is the user ID one, which is connected with post number one, which is connected another post number two. And uh, this is connected number of followers over here like that follower number one, follower number two. So when I send the request, I send the request, okay, fine, user ID one equal to one. So this will be my query entry point over here. And then it will have the connection with these, these three guys. And then the server at the server side, there are some resolver functions are available and then it will respond back. It will fetch the data, whatever it's required, and then respond back to the client side over here. And the client is showing only that information, which is required. Actually, So this is how it works with respect to GraphQL. And this is how it is actually different from a REST tape. So the typical structure of this, you can see a basic string over here. This is a query that we have to send like that. And this is a response in the JSON that we are getting it. And uh, this server side, this is the data that we have to describe in the form of a GraphQL schema, a definition language that we have to use for the developer side. They will define this schema and then once the schema is defined now the ui developer and the backend developer they both are independent ui know ui developer knows okay what kind of query what kind of type of data that i have to send to the graphql server because the uh, the schema is already defined meanwhile i can mock my services also so i can create one mock server which is for the dummy data so i can create a mock server which will provide a dummy response which is exactly the schema is defined as the schema is signed off with the GraphQL and the same request I send to the uh, mock server and then I'd get the response over here. And once the server is ready, uh, flip my server from mock server to the GraphQL server. Uh, okay. And then exact data, I'll start getting it from here like that. So this is the advantage that you will be getting. So once the schema is defined, front end and back end teams, they can work independently from one each other. Now I'll show you the GraphQL official website and see this. Describe your data, ask. This is the image that I have already taken from here a query language for API and see this is the query that we are sending it and uh, this is the response that okay we are getting it see this image this is such a nice uh, gif image is available so this is the response from the server from the graphql server that we are getting and this is the query that we are sending see this is my client on the mobile phone and i'm sending this query hero name friends and name and this is the response in the json we are getting it over here like that fine same thing describe what's possible with the type system so I want this, these, this is my query and uh, in the system, the query and the uh, schema is already defined over here. It means uh, whenever you are sending the hero, hero is character. I want a name. Okay. And hello world name and climate that I want. So you will get the exact data from the server. Okay. So like this, this is a GraphQL, uh, you know, query launchpad where you can write the query and get the response from here over here like that. Okay. So see, I want to okay, from the type film. So this is the first node. I want title episode and blah, blah, blah. And then I get more and more information like that. So you keep adding the information, fill and person, and then you will get more and more information from the server side. Okay. Like that. So these are the companies. They are already using GraphQL. These are the adopters who are actually Airbnb. And uh, there are a lot of companies are there. They started using GraphQL, Facebook and Club Mad. Uh, Coursera, okay, Curio, and there are many companies, guys, they are already started using. GitHub is there, Intuit is there, KTM is there, Kaima is there, NBC is there, Peninterest is there, Rakuten is there. So there are many companies they started, uh, Starbucks is there, Shopify is there, uh, Twitter and all these companies they started using GraphQL. So I hope you are clear about what is GraphQL and what is REST API, what is the difference and what are the advantages.
in the next uh, tutorial i'll tell you different examples and then how to hit the query graphql from the postman and then we will start doing some automation for graphql as well till then thank you so much i hope you like the video please subscribe to the channel share with others and let me know if you have any issues thank you so much guys